This bridge is monumentally huge. Not this bridge, that bridge. Deep in the south of France, the stunning Milan Bridge is a record breaker. These tapering concrete giants are the tallest piers ever built. From the top, you would look down on the Eiffel Tower. Driving above the clouds, you cross the longest cable stayed bridge deck on Earth, spanning the deepest canyon in Europe. Each year, this spectacular engineering achievement faces extremes of wind and heat in a valley no one thought could ever be conquered. But it wouldn't be standing here today without the power of lightning. Three quarters of a million volts. What? A frying pan. No, it... A lost nuclear submarine. An accident in a silver mine. And a crafty trick of ancient Celtic boat builders. <laughs> How did all those make that possible? This triumph of engineering and design lies in the massive central mountains of southern France. It was built to lift a curse on the tiny town of Milan. For 30 years, the auto route linking Paris to the beaches of the Mediterranean sped south through the French countryside. Until it hit this, the Tarn Valley. A two and a half kilometer wide, 250 meter deep gorge, or in technical terms, a very big gap. To cross this gap, the tourist traffic was diverted off the four-lane express route and funneled over Milan's tiny two-lane medieval bridge. Summer in Milan was a nightmare. Gridlock traffic with three-hour tailbacks and 18-mile queues. After three decades of mayhem, it was time to conquer the gorge. And so in 2004, the world's tallest road bridge was born. A giant span, a quarter of a kilometre high. The final lightweight steel design was the engineering equivalent of a curved ball, because the road is not straight. It arcs as it spans across the valley. The bend, designed to keep drivers alert, meant that for the engineers, it was not going to be simple to build. They needed a complex skeleton of over 2,000 individual parts. Cutting that much steel quickly and accurately would mean they'd have to master one of nature's greatest forces. But first, to get the inside angle on the jigsaw of steel that makes up the deck, security have granted me special access. This in case you haven't guessed, is the tunnel inside the deck. So right now we're sandwiched between the road up above and then, well, nothing below. And from inside you can see just how clever it is. It's hollow. They worked very hard to make it strong and light. And to do that, they needed thousands of pieces of steel that had to fit together precisely in a massive jigsaw to make the curve of the deck. And each of those pieces of steel had to be made individually and in record time. And there's the challenge. How to cut 2,078 giant pieces of shaped steel with incredible precision, phenomenally fast. The traditional way to cut steel is with one of these, an oxyacetylene torch. It works, but it's not fast and it's not easy. Painstakingly slicing over 2,000 steel panels with oxyacetylene was a potential nightmare for the engineers, especially with a 25,000 euro penalty for every day's delay if they went seriously over schedule. So for the solution to their cutting challenge, they harness the power of lightning. A bolt of lightning is an electric current that can generate up to 300,000 amps. That's enough to power 24,000 domestic kettles. More importantly, when a lightning bolt arcs through the atmosphere, it literally changes the world. It produces a new state of matter, and it's the key to cutting steel quickly. I'm about to see how. 
First, I'm going to control lightning. This machine belongs to a special effects expert. He's going to help me become a human lightning rod and direct a scary amount of power. Mark Turner is my lightning wizard. Wow! Mark, this is like walking onto the set of a 1950s b movie. Do you like it? It's brilliant, I think. What is it? It's a lightning machine. It's what we call a Tesla coil. Okay. It produces lightning. What I'd like you to do is to put this on. I'll get dressed up. You do get dressed up. This that, is the fun bit. That looks like chain mail. It is chain mail. It's what we call a Voltrex suit. It'll right. protect you from the lightning. Okay. There's holes in it. Um, so I put our boots off. Boots off, please. Check it off. Are you entirely sure about what we're doing here? What can possibly scarf. go wrong? Scarf off. It's my best scarf. Look after that, James. So one foot in there. Nice. It's nice. just the right size, isn't it? Yeah. So the machine outputs about three quarters of a million volts. What? But this suit will protect you. It's got holes in. It has got holes in. Can I have your hand? No. Please. The metal suit will act like a cage, allowing the lightning to flow around me rather than through me. At least, that's the theory. Just run it by me again, the whole, you know, if the chain mail doesn't work thing, what happens? If it were to go through you, that would be a bad thing. When you say, no, let's not explore the badness of it, yeah. which is bad. It's very bad. I mean, it's not instant, but I mean, it's, your rods are against you rather than for you. Stop talking now, please, Mark. Don't say any other words. The Tesla coil massively increases the mains voltage. When the energy level is high enough, current will flow to me, and I should be able to direct it with my finger. What about screaming and going like that very quickly? So, everybody with sensitive hearing ought to leave the room now. Anybody with implants in their ears or pacemakers or heart problems ought to leave now. And we're good to go. So, good to go, Richard. I feel lonely. Fantastic. Mark takes a moment to build the voltage to lightning levels. You feel OK? This machine was conceived by eccentric 19th century inventor Nikola Tesla. Labelled a mad scientist, well, he fell in love with a pigeon. He was also a pioneer of robotics, radio and electric power. In the course of looking for ways to transmit electricity across America, he devised this way of controlling lightning. Like nature's lightning, my lightning wants to find the shortest way to earth. It is the most extraordinary experience, like millions of ants crawling all over me. OK, crew, let's go in. So I was making lightning come out of my fingers, briefly. It can't by some freak chance just continue to happen for me specifically. Unfortunately, no. That is a superhero movie I'm it thinking is. of, isn't it? OK. So controlling lightning looks good, but how does it help engineers who want to cut steel fast and precisely? The answer to that is as fantastic sounding as lightning is to look at because what is happening is the huge surge of electricity turns the air into a fourth state of matter, plasma. We're all familiar with three states, or solids, like ice, liquids, like water, and then gas, like steam from a kettle. And we're all familiar with the way you move from one state to another. If you heat the solid, you get a liquid. If you heat a liquid, you get gas. Well, if you heat a gas with, say, a huge surge of electricity, you get plasma, the fourth state of matter. Plasma is actually common throughout the universe. The sun and the stars are pure plasma. But it's very rare on Earth. This is a slow-motion shot of man-made plasma. When it's contracted,